Hi everyone. I am Katie and I am the Marketing Coordinator at James Fisher Offshore. And part of my role at the company is to tell our story to our customers so that they understand what it is we can do for them. This is also important for our local community. There may be some of you who have heard of us, who have walked or driven past our building, yet you aren't really sure what it is that we actually do. This presentation will give you a brief overview of who James Fisher Offshore are, what it is we do, and the different opportunities and support available to you and the school. James Fisher Offshore is a global service company to the oil and gas industry, an industry that is constantly changing and an industry that has had a difficult few years due to a crash in oil price and the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The world is on a journey of net zero in order to tackle climate change. And with this comes the term energy transition, which means to move away from fossil based systems of energy like oil and gas to renewable based energy like wind and solar. Yet there is still a huge demand for oil and gas, and it is expected that oil and gas will need to provide more than half of the total cumulative energy consumed in the UK over the next three decades. There are over 12,000 offshore oil and gas platforms throughout the world, and over time they will need decommissioned and removed. This is a huge area for the oil and gas industry and a sector which James Fisher Offshore is heavily involved in. Over the past two years, we have invested in broadening our service offering into renewables, and we now have the capability and equipment to provide support services on offshore wind farms. With the energy transition comes the opportunity for oil and gas companies to reposition themselves like James Fisher Offshore has and attract new talent to lead change within the industry. You have to be in it to change it. Oil and gas industry is huge with so many different areas. In a simpler way as possible, I will explain how James Fisher Offshore fits into the industry. So the top image on this slide represents Topside, which is your platforms and support vessels. The below image is what is subsea and on the seabed underneath the platform. The operators own the platforms and the oil fields below and the subsea contractors own the vessels and they are contracted by the operator to carry out work. We work alongside both of these groups to support their projects with engineering capabilities, equipment provision, and the necessary offshore workers to carry out the work. So the main segments that we work in are subsea construction, and this is the installation of the platforms and the associated infrastructure on the seabed. Inspection, repair, and maintenance. There are some offshore platforms which have operated for over 40 years and they will require constant repairs and maintenance to operate safely and effectively. Commissioning requires the seabed to be left as close to its original state as possible and this requires the removal of the offshore platform and all associated infrastructure on the seabed. Here at James Fisher Offshore we have the capacity to carry out this work. Examples of our equipment includes winches, cranes, abrasive cutting and subsea tooling. So I have a few examples and images of the work that we have completed to give you a visual of what it is that we do. So the first image on the left is one of our hydraulic winches on an offshore platform and the second is of our equipment on the back deck of a vessel. The equipment was used on both of these jobs to support lifting requirements of production lines from the seabed. The second example shows a JFO subsea shear, which cut pipeline from the seabed. And then we had our recovery grabs, which is the image on the right, lift that cut pipeline to the surface. And the final example is from a recent project which is of platform decommissioning. 
our expert team and equipment cut the four jacket legs of the platform so that it could be removed safely from the seabed. I hope that gives you an idea of just some of the things that we do here at James Fisher Offshore. We are an international business with several offices and workshop facilities, and we offer a vast range of career opportunities. So I'll pass you on to my colleague Lindsay, who will explain some of that in more detail. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and I'm the Personnel and Competence Manager at James Fisher Offshore. My role at the company is to look after the learning and development of our employees and also to provide support to our apprentices. I'd like to talk to you today about some of the career paths at James Fisher Offshore and particularly around apprenticeships. We'll give a little bit more detail. So core skills. You've seen some of the work that James Fisher Offshore do, and you might wonder how the core skills that you do at school can fit into the workplace. So communication, this helps you with liaison with coworkers and customers. You might be talking to people face to face, on the telephone, through email. Numeracy, that helps you to understand charts, graphs, company budgets, purchase orders. Information and communication technology, in James Fisher Offshore, this is really key. We are constantly working with computers, so your computer skills, working with online documents, typing, emails, some of our systems. Problem solving would help with research, planning, checking. Working with others, this helps you understand your role and what others do. It also helps you to work as part of the team or department. Personal skills and values helps you to be dependable, reliable, Use your initiative and to show integrity. So some of the career paths at James Fisher Offshore. When someone enters the organisation, there are many career paths and directions that someone can take. And then this might be UK or it could be globally. It could be within the JFO team or it could also be within the James Fisher and Sons um, bigger group. Some of the positions that we've got here is just an idea of the types of things that you might want to do. We're very supportive of the hashtag no wrong path. Um, this is an example of some of the people within GFO and the different routes that they've taken towards their current positions. So Lauren is a personnel coordinator. She came straight from school and she's been with GFO for six years. Katie is now a trainee applications engineer. She went to university and did her degree. She's been with JFO for two years. Darren, he is a, was a hydraulic technician and he's now equipment supervisor. He started his career through an engineering apprenticeship at JFO and has been with us for 11 years. Sally, who works in our Johor facility in Malaysia, he trained as a welder and is now a work stop supervisor. He's been with the company for six years. OK, I mentioned that we want to talk to you a little bit more about modern apprenticeships. So some modern apprentice fast facts. An apprenticeship combines on the job training with classroom learning. You might go to college for part of your apprenticeship or you might do workplace learning or you might do online learning. A modern apprenticeship is a recognised qualification accredited by the SQA. It's an opportunity to earn while you learn. You would get at least apprentice minimum wage. Studies show through Skills Development Scotland that 92% of modern apprentices stay in employment once they're qualified. And just for some information, here are some examples of famous apprentices. So Gordon Ramsay, he did catering apprentice and now he's obviously a famous chef. Billy Connolly, comedian, did an apprenticeship as a welder. Ex-Aberdeen player Shay Logan, he did an apprenticeship as a plumber. And famous fashion designer Stella McCartney did her apprenticeship in tailoring. We'd now like to show you a video in the day of a life of an apprentice. This features two of the apprentices here at James Fisher Offshore.
JJ works in the operations department at James Fisher Offshore and has been with the company for two years since she left school. JJ's role as operations assistant includes working closely with the workshop technicians to ensure that the correct documentation is sent with our equipment. You can describe a typical day. So, first things first, I get in. There's a box of timesheets that the guys put their times on. The stuff that they worked on the night before. So, I need to check the time on that and see if they're allocated against the right project. So, right now we're doing file migration. Emptying folders, getting the stuff that we don't need anymore. Uh, closing up old folders. Would you say that you sometimes work to deadlines? Yeah, of course. Like, you get a dot pack and sometimes you only get a day's notice, so you have to get that together, get lifted in, make sure everything's in date, everything's suitable to go out. I mean, if you don't get out, yeah. a quarter million pound spread, that's not going out because of you. If I really needed them to help me, they would do anything for me. Yeah. And I'm a lot more confident making them now as compared to when I was first out of school. I mean, I could probably make a dot pack in about 10 minutes as opposed to like an hour. Yeah. So, how do you feel about starting your apprenticeship? Are you quite excited about it? Honestly, when I first heard about it, I wasn't at all. The idea of going back into school and having to revise and stuff wasn't appealing. But, I mean, at the end of it, I'm getting paid, I'm getting a qualification, and it'll make me better at my job. You've been here two years. Yeah. So, how do you feel? The past two years have been, do you think you've gained in confidence? Do you think you've learned yeah, a lot? Do you think? Definitely. Sean is in his third year of his hydraulic engineering apprenticeship at James Fisher Offshore. On a daily basis, Sean works as part of a larger team on a variety of different hydraulic equipment. His work includes servicing, maintenance and repairs of equipment as required. As part of his role, Sean must ensure that the correct parts are sourced and that all paperwork is kept up to date. Can you describe what a typical day for you is like? So we'd come in in the morning, we'd have our toolbox talk and then be given a designated job. Depending on what year you're in, you can usually get trust to go and do stuff yourself. If you're starting off young, you, you'll have a, like a lead tech showing you what to do and telling you what to do and t teaching you all about what yeah. you're meant to do. And what kind of things are you working on? Uh, uh, just now I've been working recently on a lot of winches, reelers, uh, HPUs. I do the all the water pump as well. Uh, sometimes the HD 400s. And um, just try and do as much as I can in the yard. I wouldn't learn everything. Really. Yeah. And is it maintenance service? So there's not jobs. We'll tend to take like a, a tool that we know doesn't work, and then we'll obviously source what the problem is and buy whatever we need to repair it, and then refit it again, and we'll test it and go from there. Okay. So how often are you at college? I uh, started off, it depends, some of the other apprentices were two days a week. I was always just one day a week, but it um, depends whether you have a barrel and so. What kind of things do you cover when you're in college? So when you first start off, you've got main, mainly you start off your first year, like your hands-on kind of stuff. So you'll be doing like bench fitting, filing, and making stuff, and then you'll go on to using lathes, learning how to weld, using some of the bigger machines like pillar drills, belt sander, stuff like that, and then um, after that it gets more like into schematics and drawings and AutoCAD and stuff like that and using more computers and you know, a bit more math kind of stuff. Yeah, so did you leave straight from school and go straight into 
Yeah, well, I didn't have an apprenticeship when I first left school. I went straight from uh, leaving in fourth year, I think it was, and I went straight into college. And then I'd done my first year of the course I wanted to do, and then second year they just took me on fish and I just kept doing the same college work. Yeah. And then I went from there. Hopefully there's a lot of opportunities and maybe get a bit offshore done and take me here there and everywhere and learn the work some more machines, fix some more stuff. So. We hope you enjoyed our video. Now we'd like to give you some top tips for interviews. Now, whether this is for an apprenticeship, college or workplace, I think they're really important. Research, show that you know about what you've applied for. If it's a role, learn more about the industry. Interviewers will see that you have taken the time to be prepared. If you can, do a mock interview. Again, it's all about preparation. Look up potential interview questions and ask someone to do a mock interview with you. Interviews now, they might be online, especially in the last year. Um, it's a lot of things have moved to Teams interviews. If this is the case, please set, um, test your IT equipment in advance. Set up in a place that you won't be disturbed. Make sure that your connections, camera, microphone, all this works before your actual interview. If it is a face-to-face -face interview, um, make sure that you know where it is, what time it's at. And either way, be early or at least on time. Be there or log in plenty of time. It's important to feel comfortable and look um, tidy and presentable. First impressions count, even if you're at home on your laptop or tablet. During an interview, if you don't understand something, take a breath and ask the interviewer to repeat or reword the question. Main thing really is come prepared. Come prepared with questions of your own, things that you might like to know more about, the role, the organisation, the industry, um, or about the interviewers. I would say that's one of the key things to make sure that you're prepared with, with questions at the end. Lastly, please don't stress, just most interviewers know that it's potentially your first interview. Have a glass of water close by. Um, don't feel that you have to constantly talk. Listen to the question. Take a breath before you make your answer. Be honest, stay positive, be confident in your skills and strengths and it will show through. As for feedback, um, lastly, you might be successful and you might not be. That doesn't mean that you weren't good enough. It just means that someone else was more suited to the role. Ask for feedback so you can learn from that. And then after a little while, you can reread that feedback and you can decide what you want to take on board for the next one. But in summary, preparation is key. Thank you very much for listening to us. Um, we, James Fisher Offshore, wish you success and happiness in whichever route you choose. If you have any questions for us, we'd be delighted to answer them.